Does anybody here own more than one property? Anybody? More than one. Does anybody want to own more than one property? <laughs> Obviously, that's one of the things we get a lot of calls on nowadays. Okay, so let's look at some of the very simple rules around that. First off, if you are somebody who already lives, let's say, in a condo, a lot of young couples now have bought a condo or a townhouse, and now they want to buy their, their kind of their own home they really want to be in. There's a lot of confusion around how much money they need for a down payment if they want to buy a second property. If you're in an existing property now and you want to keep it, and you're going to move to a new property that's going to become your new principal residence, you can still get in with 5% down. You don't need 20%. Okay? So long as this house, the new house, is going to be your new home, and you're going to take your existing house and turn it into a rental. So that is one way that you can own a second property, provided you're going to move there and get in with as little as 5% down. Now, now, some of you might have heard about the new BC Home Partnership Loan. You guys are familiar with it somewhat? That is still an opportunity for first-time buyers to take advantage of being able to reduce their down payment further, and I'll mention that at the very end, but I thought I'd just casually throw that in now. Now, if you want to buy a rental property, but you have no intention of moving into it, and you're going to buy it purely as a rental, then we need anywhere from 20 to 25% down, depending on the lender. Some lenders will let us get away with 20, others will use 25, the lenders that typically do 25 are more generous with the rent. Every lender treats rent totally different. They follow different rules in how they allocate rent. So when you've got somebody, let's say, who's getting $1,500 a month in rent, it doesn't mean we can always use all $1,500 of it. There are lenders that only let you use 50% of it, so $750. Now the downside to that is what they'll do is they'll take that rent, they'll add it to the person's income, and then they've scaled that back even further where we can only use a percentage of that. However, with the right lender and the right down payment, I recently had a gal who bought a house. She had an income of $48,000 and she qualified to own a rental property that was $650,000 with just a $48,000 income. So it's doable, but it's because she had the 25% down, we were able to find a lender who's very generous with the rent and as you know, Two bedrooms on the West Shore are renting for what, 14, 12, 14 hundred a month now? Pretty normal. Three bedrooms are 2,000, 2,500 kind of thing, in, the, in that range. Yeah, so owning a rental now really pays. So if you look at this example that we ran on the back, you got your rental sheet. Okay, so we were going to, oh no, you're on the right one. A little, we ran a little example on the back of the rental and in the front as well. So let's say, for example, we had a person purchasing a house for $700,000 and the property contains a three-bedroom suite upstairs and a two-bedroom suite downstairs. So the estimated rent we got upstairs is between $18 and $2,200, so we were conservative, so we used $1,800. Downstairs was between $12 and $1,400, so we used $1,200. The estimated property taxes are $4,000 a year. For home insurance, we allowed $1,500 a year. For maintenance and repair, we took 10% of the rent, so we even minus that from it. Said you're going to have to have a reserve when something goes wrong with the house. Down payment will be 25% down, as like I said, I mentioned, you can't get in with 20. In this situation, you've got a mortgage of $525,000 at 2.94%. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, rental properties come with a slightly higher rate than if it's your principal residence. That's pretty much across the board with every lender now. They don't price the two the same. There's a slight surcharge. However, 2.94 is still an amazing rate considering like three years ago, 2.99, we were doing cartwheels over. So which is still a phenomenal deal. You've got monthly payments of 21.91. Add to that the taxes, depreciation insurance, that's 29.49. And that leaves you a surplus of $51 still left over, allowing for maintenance, property taxes, everything. However, over the five years, your tenants have paid $59,000 of your principal off. That's without any appreciation in that situation. So that's pretty amazing. You got $60,000 basically of free money. You've got appreciation on the property. You've allowed for maintenance. You've allowed for repairs. 
certainly not a bad option for people who say so. And in that situation, again, your income doesn't have to be phenomenal as long as you've got that 25% down. We've got lenders who will use that rent very generously, allowing you to qualify for that. Have you even had? I was just going to ask, are you allowing for a um, legal suite or illegal suite in this? Great question. It doesn't matter with the lenders we work with. They could be legal or illegal. Non conforming. There you go. Yeah. So if you have either conforming or non conforming, lenders don't care. When it's when it's conventional like that, we can work with either one. The only time that you will have a challenge is if you buy a property that has a detached building. Sometimes you'll have people who are buying rural property, they'll have a cottage. That cottage has rental income. Lenders will not use that when it's detached. Okay? Unless the zoning allows for two structures, and that's a, then it has to be legal for that income to count. Those are the only times it's odd. But when you have a house with two suites in it, even if the basement suite's not legal, it's still fine. We can use I'm the income. Not No, I'm sorry, <laughs> not conforming. Like, got me again. Not conforming. I have to get a little jar to put money in there. Okay, not conforming. I've got the jar. I'll collect from you later. No problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's one of those situations that happen. So the, the units have to be in there. You can go up, you can have a fourplex, a threeplex, all of those we can still use income with, but once you go over four units in a structure, then it becomes commercial lending. You can't have it as residential anymore. And lenders have a cap on how many properties you're allowed to own as well. Most lenders will allow you to have up to four properties. Beyond that, they're going to treat you as a commercial investor. And then lending changes again. So, and again, with lenders as far as income and how they treat rental income, some lenders are going to want you to prove it via an appraisal letter, so they'll ask an appraiser to provide rental proof of what you're getting. Some lenders will want a rental agreement from your purchasers to prove they can rent it out for that much. Those are usually the two typical situations. The other thing is if you have clients that own rental property and they don't declare the rent, many lenders now won't even consider that income anymore unless it's declared. Yeah. Airbnb income? No. Airbnb, well, I'll qualify that. If you were looking at refinancing a property that you were using for Airbnb purposes, we can't, it's, the lenders don't want to lend on that. However, we've had situations where people declare the income for the place. Like I have a young lad who basically rents out a condo and he files it, he declares all the income, the gross, he has some expenses that he puts through. We found a lender who would use it. But strictly when it's you're trying to buy a unit, let's say for example the Janion was a good example, that was a building downtown that was in a zone that was hotel zoning and people are running it for Airbnb. Conventional lenders won't lend on that. Yeah. It's just the transient nature of it, they won't they won't lend. You want to see long term rental agreements. They do, yeah. It's because of the fact that one of the things we fail to remember as Canadians is when we put our 20 or 25% down, the bank still owns 75% of this property. It's their, their property. What we have in Canada is called a right of redemption. You can redeem the equity you have in it, but you don't actually own the property. They do. So it's their property that you have agreed to maintain, upkeep, and do all the stuff for. And that's one of the reasons they do that. But lots of opportunities still with condos, all those typical buildings. The other types of properties that for rentals that you can't have or we can't borrow against are ones that are in rental pools or those hotels slash, you know, like you can rent, live two months of the year or something or they're thrown into pool. All of those types of properties, you're not going to get traditional lending on. Okay. All right. So yeah, that covers, that covers that. And there's really, we've got lenders that have got multiple ways to calculate it. We've had guys that, have owned three, four properties, and you can still qualify for another one. Again, every situation is unique. So if you have a friend, or you've got a colleague, or a client, somebody says, look, I already own two, I don't think I'm going to qualify for one more, nobody says they're not. And even if you own two, and you were buying a new house to live in, that house you can still buy with 5%. So there's no limit of how many times you can buy a house with 5% down. Because that has nothing to do with uh, do with being a first-time buyer. A lot of people have, confuse that. How long do you have to actually live in? 
well, it should be your house. That's really what you're doing, right? That's, that's the idea if you say you're going to live there. And uh, I know the government's tightened up on sort of how they're treating that. And lenders, just so you know, uh, do do their due diligence. They'll check. They'll do random stuff. Um, you know, chances are if you turn it into a rental, you're going to change your home insurance. Your home insurance will then indicate it's a rental property. Your lender gets a copy of it. So. It's a condo. Fair enough. But, the, but our goal always is we're going to approach it in an honest basis. If that's what you're telling us you're doing, that's what you're doing. Be aware of the risks. Can a lender call your mortgage on it? No, but it's it's their prerogative. They can do what they want. Yeah. yeah. So I don't really understand that last part. Um, can you explain that again? You, you said that you, you can buy multiple homes at 5% down? If it's, if it's going to be your principal residence to live in, but again, CMHC is not stupid. If you, every two years you have a new principal residence, <laughs> they're going to kind of figure out you're trying to do a rental portfolio. They have a limit where they only let you have one insured property with them, and that's it. However, the other insurer, Genworth, allows you to have more than one insured property. So that can happen, but typically it's a situation where, let's say, five years later, you would do this. It's not something you're doing every single year to try to acquire property, because that's what used to happen. There are people I've encountered that have eight, nine insured properties. How they ever got away with it is probably exactly that. They said, oh, I'm going to live. And now the systems are certainly catching up. And they get a long-term mortgage, and then have that one just play out for sometimes five days. Yeah. Years. Well, the challenge is again, lenders once they know it's a rental are going to treat it different. They can requalify you. There's a lot of things they can do. Just because you have a mortgage doesn't mean that the lender automatically has to renew you. There's no nothing in there that stipulates they have to do that. If there's something about it they don't like, they look at your credit, they look at some other situation, there's all kinds of things they can look at. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? That makes sense. Okay. So are you taking questions now or are you Well, I got I got a I got a my daughter's piano thing that I have to be on. Oh, okay. Yeah. What time? Okay. What time is it? It's 10 after. <laughs> so yeah. My wife will be texting me soon. So you get it. However, okay. Keith's here. April's here. They're going to be happy to answer your questions. We can also book appointments for anything you got. We'll structure it. Take the handouts. Give us a shout. You know, I mean, that's what we're here for. Will the PowerPoint 